Hello everyone, welcome to the Ranching Shop with me, Melissa. Today we're going to be discussing Puts a Ring on It, Season 4, Episode 4. And last episode, we know that Dunbar and Chance decided to leave the process. And I think any couple would feel like that type of environment will pull them apart because basically you're inviting people to your relationship and it's very challenging but I understand the pref the how do I say I could understand the logic behind it so to speak but some people they just feel like it's too much and they did and so we have the meeting everybody's coming in one by one and then finally we see the new couple Jasmine and Z and First of all, that couple is a whole red flag, primarily on his side, because y'all met in Cancun, right? And y'all were dating and stuff like that. And not even too long into your relationship, he's giving another woman or he's asking another woman for her Instagram. That's crazy. And then his excuse is, oh, he drank too much. So basically what it is, is when you drink, you forget that you're single. And what lead, what that leads me to believe is that he's probably cheated on this woman before. Because you can't tell me you work in that type of nightlife scene and you haven't drunk before. And you haven't done crazy stuff before. Considering you, you did that in front of her, I wouldn't put it past him. Like off the bat just separate because that relationship don't make no sense to me and then we learned that he gave her she thinking he going to propose and he really just giving her a promise ring like are we serious right now right and then we learned that well during the lounge day she is controlling and i think she women do that because they feel like that's the only way they could trust in their relationship is when they feel like they can control certain things but that is just you hiding behind a false sense of security because at the end of the day he is his own person and he's going to do what he wants despite you putting a hundred boundaries on him and telling him you don't want him to do a million things he's still gonna find a way to do what he wants to do so women get caught up in that false sense of thinking like you run stuff trust me you, you don't run a man a man is gonna do what he wants to do um and then what really stood out to me was you know when they were talking about uh they were talking about i should say her like they were talking about dates and stuff and she's like i i want to control how much he drinks because i don't want him to act loose around random women that's crazy and that sounds insane from the outside and that is why sometimes you need outside perspectives on things because as much as yeah we may not understand the internal aspects of your relationship but for you to say something like you want to control how much he drink because you don't want him acting loose. That sounds insane. And even if you were to tell him no drinking, does that mean he's going to not drink? Even if you told him no kissing and no touching, does that mean he's going to not do these things? You know, it's just this false sense of security. Anyways, it was her time to go on that date. She says, he says no kissing, no touching. And basically, she's worried about him because she feels like he lacks self-control and might do something crazy. And I agree with that. And my thing is, you even thinking that, that should really be telling you something in your mind. Like, is this relationship really with my mental health? You know, I don't think it is. So she went on a date with the guy. He buffy looking shape, but pure red flags one after the other. Number one, he's 23. Number two, he's a, he works in the nightlife. Number three, he wants to do a additional job where he goes to people's houses and cooks for them butt-ass naked. Tell me, 
like this has to be a joke you see the same way she thought it was a joke i'm thinking it was a joke too because what that was crazy but dr stacy came to the house to speak on boundaries and basically what they were talking about at the cancun trip and to make matters worse we found out that there was an instance where she had an altercation with one of his childhood friends and he slapped her or he said he was gonna slap her and he apologized to Zay but didn't even apologize to the woman he threatened and the fact that Zay continues to have that friend around the vicinity of his woman is crazy to me yes he's a childhood friend but clearly he does not have any type of respect and as people say show me who your friends are and i'll show you who you are so you continuing that type of toxic relationship with that friend that doesn't respect you or your relationship is insane to me and if i was that lady jasmine i would leave because there's just way too many red flags in this whole situation oh he has to he's struggling to like you know balance his relationship with his friends like if it's a struggle for you i would make it easy for you and just let you go with your friends be with your friends and i'll go elsewhere because come on at this age you're playing these kinds of games okay let's move on to joya and jisha so he is going on a date with britney Britney says step up or step back or step aside. Britney wasn't joking. They went to a candle making place and Britney is all over this man, touching his muscles, touching his hair, his um, facial hair, just being so flirty. And yes, he liked it, but he also looked extremely uncomfortable. And of course he would be because he's the one in the relationship, but she was really, really pushy very very pushy and it even made me uncomfortable and it kind of annoyed me a bit seeing how she kept touching his beard it's like can you chill and stop touching this stranger you don't even know this man but anyways clearly she's attracted to him and clearly he likes the way she is all over him but i don't feel as if britney is the type of person that is on his speed I think the woman that he was on the first date with, that woman was on his level in every way. Not Britney. Britney wants the same thing J um, Joya wants. And knowing Zay, he's going to drag his foot on that. So that would not work at all. So they go home and he's explaining the date to her and she's feeling like he's not telling her certain things. And, and she's right. He's not going to tell her certain things because you know what? She's going to get upset. If he tells her she was touching on me and pulling my beard, she's going to get upset. So he's choosing to keep that information to himself. Now, as much as you have to be fully transparent, you almost have to pick your battles as well and know when to say to certain things. And knowing that she was already like up in arms, it was best for him to keep that to himself, honestly. So I agree with him in that regard. Now, um, I think that's all. Let's move on to Catherine and Ricky. Now, Ricky strikes me as very soft, easily influenced and i don't see that as a masculine quality because i feel like if you're a certain person that is you know comfortable in your masculinity you will not let people tell you what to do you know what i'm saying but it looks as if it's easy for him to be pushed into doing a certain thing which is scary because what that means is that he could potentially he could he sounds like a cheater he sounds like somebody that could cheat on someone because he felt peer pressured to cheat you know like he doesn't know how to quite say no and stand firm so she felt away Catherine, when you know he initially said no to the date but he felt she felt as if so okay if you initially said no why because she pushed back on that answer you changed your mind you know and i agree with that as well but then again my thing about it is he said no because he wanted to 
you know, secure your feelings. He did. He didn't say no because he didn't want to, and that's probably the reason why he went along and did it, and actually was honest with himself about the situation. And she didn't like that. But anyway, he went out on the date with Miss Miss Red Hair. And she keeps trying to feed the man. The man clearly feels comfortable with you feeding him. But yet still, she still insists on doing it. Like if you want the man to try something on your plate, you could just have him pick up the piece of food himself. Like feeding him is doing a bit too much. Um. So he finally did it. He, he made her like feed him. And they were laughing and he was being like looser with her and more comfortable with her. I guess that happens when you go on second dates with people. You feel more comfortable with them. Um, she comes across as quite crazy and a lot to deal with. So just the way Ricky seems, I just do feel like him and that girl would make a good kind of relationship anyway. Because in the long run, I see a lot of issues happening with them. Um, just because she seems very forward and a lot. And I don't know if we could really deal with that. So, she seems fun as a date, but I don't know if it should be as good as a partner. And then we learn that she's starting to like Ricky and she's basically saying Catherine has competition. I just foresee drama and I can't wait to see if he decides to go on a second date with, a third date with that girl because... If he does, I feel like it's going to be a lot of problems in the relationship with he has with Catherine. For some reason, I feel like he's going to deny a third date because he mentioned that they were too comfortable with each other the second time around. So I definitely feel like he'll not go on a third date. But one thing I must say that is different from Dr. Nicole is that with this doctor, she's too pushy. She's way too pushy, and I don't like that, you know. But anyways, we'll see how things go next episode. Let me know what you guys think about this episode in the comment section. Like, subscribe, and see you guys next time for another episode. Bye.